How to find, extract and refine oil in Factorio. This tutorial will explain you everything about this liquid, so you will be able to create the late game science and you will finally send a rocket to the space. Oil is one of the hardest mechanic for beginners and many people quit Factorio because they don't understand how it works. But this video will show you all the steps and things you have to do to progress with refinery, even if you have a smooth brain. We will start from basic recipe and simple setup to advance oil cracking to at the end make huge refineries with beacons and will even crack some coal into oil. Feel free to use sections, blueprints and subtitles to understand anything. But without any further ado, let's start with this freedom liquid. We will begin with the question how does oil work and where you can harvest it. So oil is another resource necessary for crafting in Factorio. However, instead of harvesting and smelting it with miners and furnaces by using belts, you have to find an oil patch and go with pump jacks and pipes. This small difference makes logistics way, way harder. Because instead of using just belts, inserters and assemblers for crafting, you also need to worry about refineries, chemical plants and all the pipes connections, which can introduce a lot of new spaghetti to your base. However, it's actually very simple. The best way to find oil is to place radars at the corners of your factory, so they scan the biggest area around them. After you let them go for some time, you can look through the map to find those purple dots which are oil filled. If you haven't found anything, you can either explore on your own with a car or build radars outside of your base for even bigger scan coverage. This simple construction of one radar and five solar panels will work great as a self-sustaining scouting outpost. However, it will only work during the day. So after you find the oil and craft batteries, you should upgrade it to seven solars and four accumulators to have a constant view on your neighbors and speaking about them. As long as your scout scouting outpost isn't on their way, they shouldn't attack it at all, because it doesn't produce any pollution to trigger them. After you find the oil patch and you neutralize the surrounding eco activists with bullets, you can start the harvesting. Oil is an infinite resource and you can extract it forever. However, its production lowers over time and at some point the field produces almost nothing. That's why later even modules and beacons are not gonna make the production sufficient and you need to build another outpost. What can you craft by using oil? Crude oil itself is just the rough material and there is no use for it in this form, besides making flamethrower ammo and burning your enemies alive. To make use of crude oil, you need to first process it in the refinery into three other liquids, which are heavy oil, light oil and petroleum. Heavy oil is the least useful material, because when it comes to crafting, you can use it only to make lubricant for electric engines or for tier 3 blue belts, splitters and underground belts. However, instead of using it as a crafting material, you can also transform it into next liquid, which is light oil. The best use for light oil is to turn it into some form of fuel, because in comparison to other fluids, it yields the most burning value. Solid fuel can be used in your smelting columns or in the power plants instead of coal. Rocket fuel will allow you to send the rocket to the space, so you can finally finish the game. However, the factory must grow and sending the rocket shouldn't stop it and instead you should automate the production and go for progression with infinite research. Other use for the rocket fuel is to utilize it in your vehicles. With this fuel the acceleration will be set to a whooping 180% and top speed at 115%. You can also put it in the trains, cars or tanks for better crushing power. Light oil can be also transformed into another liquid, which is petroleum gas. Petroleum is the most important liquid because you can turn it into sulfur, which is kind of useful, I guess. And you can turn it into plastic, which is indirectly used basically in all of the late game recipes starting at the red circuits, through electric furnaces and even nuclear reactors or rocket silo. This is why it's important to make a huge production of plastic, so you won't bottleneck your factory with lack of it. 
if you use the main bus, I recommend you dedicate two belts just for plastic. But for more info about the main bus, you can watch my different video. The best way to craft refinery elements. Like I said before, to create refinery in different buildings from a normal smelting columns. I mean, you still need inserters, belts and power poles. But in addition to that, you also need pipes, underground pipes, pump jacks, refineries, long inserters, chemical plants, offshore pumps, normal pumps, boilers, tanks and place to store dead bodies of your enemies. Most of those machines are not used in big quantities, so making a dedicated production for offshore pumps or pump jacks might be an overkill for your small mall, because you can just easily handcraft everything for your first refinery. However, it's good to make some kind of buffer for green circuits and gears to make handcrafting faster. Also, you should produce a big quantity of pipes and underground pipes, since they are necessary for handcrafting and overall for building refineries. When you send your first rocket and you're going for bigger base, then it's a good time to automate the production of all the elements. It's also way easier with access to construction and logistic bots. How to build the best and easiest refinery in Factorio? Building a perfectly balanced refinery with no exploits requires a lot of math, calculations and overall a lot of time for designing. You know, you need to keep in mind refinery speed, output quantities, all the cracking recipes, pipes throughput and so on. If you like designing everything at perfect ratio, then I recommend you this free online tool to plan your whole factory. You can also use some mods to calculate ratios on the fly. But after you start adding modules and beacons, all your designs will go off ratio and you must start from scratch. This is why I prefer to show you the smooth brain solution which is so simple that even your grandma with Alzheimer will be able to build the refinery with this guide. The smooth brain refinery is built out of four blocks, which are refinery lines, storage area, cracking and the production of everything else. Here is an example of my late game spaghetti refinery built in this style. So it might not be the clearest example, but no worries, we'll build it in a way that is grandma level of understanding. First are the refinery lines. In the beginning, you will only have access to basic oil processing, which takes rough crude oil and outputs petroleum. So simple placement of refineries and power poles alternately will make a great production. Then just place the input and output pipes in a straight line. Remember to leave some space in case you want to expand your refinery line to one or both sides. Then you have to use this cringe refinery recipe to produce enough enough plastic and sulfur to research the advanced oil processing, which starts the real oil fun. You can either build some temporary solution or wait a little bit to a point when I explain the other elements of the refinery. And you can build a small version of that. So you manufactured enough blue science to research advanced oil processing. Now you should prepare for a change of recipe to advanced oil processing. It's producing more petroleum and additionally heavy and light oil for just the cost of free water. So it's a no-brainer to switch for it as soon as possible. However, the new recipe will mess up your whole refinery by connecting multiple liquids via single pipe, which is a forbidden way of handling fluids in fire. But no worries, it's fixable. You can just flush the pipes with this button and fix the plumbing. Factorio has many quality of life features, like it's automatically removing pipes whenever you build underguns over them. Thanks to this feature, it's extremely easy to change pipes for advanced oil processing. Changing those pipes is the first setup. Next is to add two more outputs and one more input. This design makes it very tailable, because you can just copy the existing refinery and paste however more you like. You can also see why we left one tile of space between refineries. If you haven't changed the recipe yet, now is the time for a switch on all your refineries. Do it by changing one refinery and then copying its recipe with shift right mouse button and pasting the recipe with shift left mouse button. 
if your refinery line is as huge as USA military budget, then we should copy the new recipe with Ctrl C and paste it with Ctrl V from the map view. Just hold the left mouse button and drag the line. With working refinery line, the next step is to build a storage area. Advanced players who like radios and perfect calculations might dislike this idea. However, thanks to those tanks, it's so easy to spot any bottlenecks and see your storage capacity with just a little bit of circuits. To build it, you just have to place a few tanks and connect them to your refinery outputs. It doesn't matter where you connect it. However, you might need to place a pump to suck all of the liquids if your refinery line is too big. Or you will even need to place another output pipe if you speed up your refineries with tons of modules and beacons. Size of the storage is up to you. However, steel is kind of expensive in the early game. This is why I prefer to go with just 4 tanks for each liquid, which are heavy oil, light oil, petroleum gas and lubricant. It's enough buffer for start and you can always expand it later if you leave enough space for it. It's also nice to have everything connected to circuit logic. And it's extremely simple. Even satisfactory player will understand those circuits. You just connect four tanks together with a wire of the same color. And then you connect it to a power pole or multiple power poles for easier access. After you connect all the tanks, you can see what they storage whenever you hover over a connected power pole. To expand, just copy and paste tanks with wires. Connect another four and build it as big as you wish. If you want to be very fancy, you can build a light indicator showing how much of each liquid do you have in your storage area. It will help finding bottlenecks and look very cool at the same time. Next is a cracking part of the refinery, which will make sure that you don't overproduce one of the liquids. If you skip this step, your whole refinery will stop working and everything will become a big bottleneck. The cracking recipe is remarkably simple. It just takes water and liquid for cracking. So one design works for both recipes. My recommended design is a line of output and two lines of inputs. One connect with normal pipe and another with underground. This this design makes expansion extremely easy to scale whenever you need more production. When it comes to radios, you need around 3 times more light oil to petroleum gas cracking than heavy oil to light oil cracking. It's because recipe quantities are slightly different. What's more, you make additional light oil from heavy oil cracking and you make more light oil in the refinery itself. However, you don't need to count anything, just a bullet in the beginning and then adjust based on your storage tanks indicators. Just remember to leave enough space for expansion. And for the late game, you can flip the design and put some extra speed beacons in between for an additional speed upgrade. The last, but definitely not least, is the production area. We made sure that we refine the crude oil in the refineries, then store it in the tanks and prevent any bottlenecks with cracking. So now it's the time to finally use it for anything useful. There is water and for other liquids which you deal with in the refinery. I will explain them by the cracking order. So crude oil, heavy oil, light oil and petroleum gas. First is rough crude oil and when it comes to crafting you can only use it in the flamethrower ammo. Personally I don't produce it in my refineries because I prefer other negotiation tools like bullets, rockets and normal flamethrower towers which consume oil straight from the pipes. But if you want to produce flamethrower ammo just wait for the logistic bots so you don't need to bring spaghetti belts with steel to your refinery. Next is heavy oil with even simpler crafting recipe. The only thing you can make with it is loop. And recipe is just heavy oil turning into lubricant. However, to make sure that you always have enough loop, it's important to set up a basic circuit logic. Replace your current connection between heavy oil storage and cracking with a pump. Then connect the pump using a wire with the loop storage tanks. Next, click on the pump and set up a logic to only turn them on if you have more than 10,000 units of loop in your storage. That's the whole logic, which will make sure that you always have sufficient amount of loop for electric engines and Bluebirds production. When it comes to the number of chemical plants for loop, 
you don't need any huge amount and for the most cases one chemical plant will be enough for your needs. However, it's good to build a little bit more just in case. Also, if you want to upgrade your base in the late game and switch to tier 3 blue belts, then you should leave enough space for even 10 of those lubricant chemical plants. Another liquid on the list is light oil, which is used only for a fuel production. If you want to supplement your steam power plant or smelting column, you can build a line of chemical plants making solid fuel. But if you are fine with coal and you don't do coal liquefaction, which will be explained later, there is no much need for this type of design. On the other hand, rocket fuel is something which you want to produce in a good quantity. But instead of building a separate solid fuel production and playing with belt spaghetti, I recommend you go with direct feeding. Single chemical plant producing solid fuel can supply two assemblers making rocket fuel. In the late game you can upgrade it to better assemblers and fill it with productivity modules to keep this almost perfect ratio. You will need to produce quite a lot of rocket fuel to supply your whole train network and you will need even more to regularly send rocket to the space. Here is the same drill with the quantity of production. A bullet in the beginning and build more in case of a rocket fuel being bottleneck. I suggest to build the production on the both sides, so we can utilize the whole belt and make expansion by copying and pasting even quicker. You don't need to make this production in the beginning if you are not using trains yet. But you have to keep in mind that you will build it at some point and it will be huge in the late game. Like 20 or 40 chemical plants with 40 or 80 assemblers making solid fuel. If you like trains and you want to make them go faster, then you should start with something smaller, like 10 chemical plants and 20 assemblers. But you must leave enough space for a later expansion. If you looked at the recipes in the game, you might realize that you can make solid fuel with all three liquids. However, it's simply the most efficient to use light oil. This is why I haven't even mentioned a solid fuel crafting for other liquids. The last but definitely not least fluid in the production area is petroleum gas, which is extremely important like I said before. There are only two products that you can make with petroleum, which are sulfur and plastic. Sulfur requires only water and petroleum to make, so you don't need to supply it with any belts. Also, the production of sulfur is pretty fast and with three chemical plants you will have sufficient amount to craft science and set a rocket to the space. Sulfur itself is an ingredient for blue science, but you really don't need much of it for that recipe. The biggest sulfur drain is when you make a sulfuric acid production to supply peace science and late game modules production. Manufacturing of sulfur itself doesn't require any belts to operate. But if you want to produce sulfuric acid in the refinery area, then you need to bring an iron belt to it. In the early and mid game, one chemical plant for sulfuric acid will be enough. But space for expansion is appreciated as always. With produced sulfuric acid, you can simply put it into pipes and transport to somewhere where you make batteries and blue circuits. Also, there is a tip. Your blue circuit production is too small, no matter how big you build it. The same applies to other circuits production. The best place to build your refinery. When it comes to building your refinery, the most important thing is to find area with sufficient amount of free space. Just imagine how much space do you need and then multiply that space by 3 to make sure it will be enough. You can always remove trees with grenades and cliffs with explosives. But it takes a lot of time to move parts of your factory to a different place when you run out of space. Also, even so you can landfill the lake, in most cases it's not worth the struggle. Beside of free space, it's also important to not build your refinery in the middle of nowhere, because then you will have to connect it with spaghetti and build belts and pipes all over the base. This is why good connection to oil patch, water lake and oil Overall to your base is important. If you play with the main bus, you can design it in a way that one side is dedicated to normal crafting and another side for refinery stuff. 
This way you have enough space for everything and a good connection to all the resources from the main bus. Another way, which I'm not the biggest fan of, is to build refinery at the very beginning of your bus, so you can supply it with refined materials from the start. Long story short, there is no perfect spot for the refinery and it highly varies from game to game. So you have to think for yourself and find the best spot for your factory. How does liquid pressure works in Factorion? When it comes to fluids and their flow, there is nothing complicated and it's not like you need to have a degree to understand it or do you? What does it even mean? Never mind, here is all the info you will need. Pipes lose pressure on the long distances and transferring huge amounts of liquids for miles might be problematic. This is why underground pipes are very handy, since their throughput is only counted on the parts above the ground. So when you are connecting oil outposts, always use underground pipes for better pressure and easier walking access. In case of unusual long distance, you might also consider using using pumps from time to time, since they work as a one-way valve and they will force liquids to go through them with higher pressure. It really makes a difference when throughput matters. Pumps are also important in the refiner area, when you are going very big and normal pipes throughput becomes a bottleneck. It might not be obvious, but a good use for pumps is to place them as a sucker for liquid. Like when you have liquid output, just put pump at the very end and it will help with the throughput. Also, with huge storage tanks, it might be a good idea to separate them with pumps. This way, you will always have fluids where you need them. How can you use barrels in Factorio? I prepared the whole explanation and all the edge cases how you can use barrels in the early game with your car or how to kickstart your coal liquefaction and how useful they are in the mall or in the expansion when you want to send liquids to another planet. But I removed that part of the video because there is a simpler explanation for barrels. In 99% of cases you don't need barrels at all because they suck unless you're on a multiplayer game and you want to troll other people. The best loading and unloading stations for liquid drains. Pipes are a good solution to transfer crude oil in the early game, but after you connect your first outpost, it's better to then go with drains. They are just cheaper and easier to expand on the long run. When you're a building, loading or unloading stations, it's important to align pumps correctly. The easiest way to do it is by building a fluid drains first. Send him to a station and then place the pumps. Those pumps aren't some kind of special unloaders. They are the same pumps I've been talking about before. We are using buffer trust whenever we build normal or outposts. And we should do the same thing with fluid outposts. But there are no chests. So what are we doing instead? Yes, we're gonna use tanks. I mean, those tanks. When you directly connect tank with fluid wagon, you can load it in no time. But to make it load even faster, you can put up to three pumps for each wagon. I don't know if you need this speed, but it's up to you. Loading and unloading stations look basically the same. So you can just design unloading station, turn the pumps to the older way and create loading station. What is coal liquefaction and should you use it? There are three recipes in the refinery, which are basic oil processing, advanced oil processing and coal liquefaction. You already know what are the first two recipes, but coal liquefaction is a recipe that most of the Factorio players never used before. The main reason why it's not popular is because it's a little bit complicated with all the loops, extra inputs and steam generation. But there is nothing to be afraid of. I can even use Imperials to make it easier to understand. The coal liquefaction recipe takes 10 ounces of coal, 25 gallons of heavy oil and 50 banana units of steam. This yields 90 gallons of heavy oil, 20 gallons of light oil and 10 gallons of petroleum. So it's producing more heavy oil than it's consuming. And the only outside material that is needed is coal and water. But water is free, isn't it? The biggest problem while setting up this design is to make sure that it doesn't run out of heavy oil. But it can be done with a single tank and pump. 
just make a closed loop for heavy oil and only place output pump with a circuit logic. If there is more than 10,000 heavy oil in tank, make the pump work. This way you will always have heavy oil for the refineries without any need to calculate radius. The rest of the refinery works the same. You have to build enough cracking for each liquid and some way to consume it. My recommendation would be to convert everything into petroleum gas and then turn it into plastic because you already have a steady supply of coal nearby. So why don't you use it? Plastic is also very important in the late game, so you always need more of it. Another approach is to turn everything into light oil and then make solid fuel out of it. This way of producing steam electricity is way more fuel efficient than using coal straight away. Since coal liquefaction needs a little bit of heavy oil to kickstart the production, it's good to just use a few barrels instead of bringing heavy oil in pipes for half the map. You probably wonder if this refinery is more efficient than normal one with advanced oil processing and the answer is no it's just different recipe that consume different input and you just have to decide if you want to build it or not late game use for oil and refinery early game when you struggle with every single resource is way different than late game when you are basically a god and you can build anything in any way you like this also applies to refineries, because at this point you want to fill every available space with speed beacon and every machine with productivity module. Beacons consume a lot of electricity, so make sure they affect as many buildings as possible to don't waste the electricity. With this speed upgrade, pipes might be unable to accommodate a large flow of fluids, so you have to utilize pumps and if it's still not enough, you have to build another pipe slab. If you are in a very late game, you can play with designs like this one or like that one. But if you are at this level of enlightenment, you probably don't need any more guides about oil. However, if you want to build such enormous structures, you definitely have to use construction bots. Luckily, this next video will explain you everything about blueprints, construction and logistic bots. Or if you need help with smelting, main bus, trains, nuclear or anything factorial related, check out my whole tutorial playlist. I also want to thank all of my patrons, which are meatballs on my spaghetti and nukes in my rocket launcher. You guys are rocks. There was definitely not enough Morrican jokes in this video.